All right, so let's go ahead and calculate the rate and rhythm uh, for this EKG. So again, I like the easy way. Let's just go ahead and add the R waves up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's about seven. So that gives us seven R waves. So take seven R waves and multiply that by six. That gives us 42. So there's 42 beats per minute. Well, remember, what did we say was a normal rate? 60 to 100. Ooh, this is low. So this is actually definitely going to be bradycardic. Okay, so that's something to remember. This is definitely a bradycardic uh, rate. So let's write that down, 42. And again, if you guys want to, you can use the other method, the 300 to 150 to 100. If you wanted to, you could count all the boxes. I think this way that we just did is pretty quick. Again, if you guys want to, go ahead and calculate that out. That's good practice. All right, let's do the rhythm. What do we do? R to R, all right? So let's go ahead and take this and we say R to there, R there. So we're gonna count the boxes. So we got about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we'll say about half of that eight, right? And again, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna say about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, I'm getting about eight boxes between these. And again, just take a look at the EKG. Just step back and look at it. You should be able to identify that this is pretty regular. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And again, a little bit half of that one. So this is definitely a regular like rhythm. So this is definitely regular. So I would say that this is regular R to R intervals. Okay, P wave, what do we determine? We have to look at lead two. So lead two, it has to be an upright P wave. It is. We gotta go to AVR and we gotta find a inverted P wave. Up, oh, look at that. What does that tell us guys? If it's upright in two, inverted in AVR, that means that this is sinus. Hmm. This is pretty interesting, right? Now, we go to our rhythm strip here. And we can tell that we have like a little bit of a P wave. It's a little odd here. But we have our QRS complex. Then we got our inverted T wave here. And then we're going to have a P wave. So P wave there. And our QRS. Then we have our T. Then again, we got our P, QRS. And we got our T. And again, we got our P. And we got our QRS. And we got our T. So you can see here that this is actually definitely having AV association. So that's interesting, right? So we have an AV association because we know that there's a QRS wave for every P wave. All right, QRS complex, what do we look for? We look for it to be wide or narrow. Well, I want us to take a look over here. Look at this, this is interesting, right? This is, let's say it's about the start of that one. That's about the end of that one right there. So if I look here, these dots are representing a box. So that's one. That's two. Oh, that's three. That's a little bit more than three boxes, guys. That's a little bit more than three. This is actually greater than uh, 0 0.12 seconds. So what does that mean? That's a wide QRS. Now, we didn't talk about this yet, but whenever you see these little this configuration here, where we call it R, S, R configuration, particularly confined to V1 to V3. So again, you get a little bit of it here in V1. You get a little bit of this. Definitely got another one in V2, and you got another one in V3. We call these bunny ears, but they're an RSR configuration. This is indicative of a right bundle branch block. So you definitely have a wide QRS complex here. So this is something that I want you guys to take a look at here. Again, that's a wide QRS complex. That's just to give you a perfect example. So this is a wide QRS. Now this is interesting because you might be thinking, oh, I thought this was definitely looking to be normal, right? What well, kind of is, you have a sinus, so we're going to say that this one is definitely sinus, right? Because we have a P wave and there is AV association. But again, look at the rate. It's bradycardic. So we have sinus bradycardia with what a wide qrs but what's that wide qrs due to a right bundle branch block with a right bundle branch block and sometimes right bundle branch blocks could be uh kind of like not necessarily as ominous as compared to left bundle branch blocks but that's definitely what this ekg is and again if you guys want to right bundle branch block what you're looking for just very basically here is you're looking for v1 to v3 you're looking for what's called an r s r configuration and then in V5 and V6, you're usually looking for kind of a PVC 
uh, type of pattern okay and again we'll go over this stuff a little bit later um, again if you look in v5 and v6 look you have this st segment depression so again this is something that you look for in v5 and v6 but a nice little way that I like to remember it is that you can remember marrow so M is gonna be in the front of this word right so that's v1 to v3 and then I have a wide um, QRS complex also in v5 and v6 and again this is indicative of R so right bundle branch block so that's a nice little way that I like to remember is again M is usually referred to as these bunny ears this is the bunny ears okay so this is sinus bradycardia with right bundle branch block so that's how we would determine this okay let's move on to the next EKG all right so now we're gonna move into this next EKG let's calculate the rate let's do the easy way right 10 second strip so we got one two three four five six 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So if we have 27 R waves and we multiply that by 6, that equals 162 beats per minute. Man, I'm good at math. So that is definitely really fast, right? So again, what did we say the normal rate is? We said it's about 60 to 100 beats per minute. Well, this is definitely really fast. So this is tachycardic. And again, let's take another example. This is a six second rhythm strip. One, two, three, four, five, six second rhythm strip, right? So let's count this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So 14 R waves and you multiply that by 10, that's equal to 140 beats per minute. And again, that's still greater than um, 100 beats per minute. So this is still tacky. This is definitely a tacky heart rate, okay? So we know that it's tacky. That's definitely abnormal. So we're gonna go ahead for right now, for this one, it's 162 beats per minute. So this, definitely, this dude's definitely tacky. All right, next thing we have to determine is the rhythm. How do we determine the rhythm? The rhythm is going to look at the R to R intervals. We want them to be about equal with one another. Just take a look at it. Look at, again, so let's say here we have from this line to this line. It's about two boxes. Are they, each one from each one another, are they about two boxes? Okay, this one's definitely two boxes. Two boxes. I'd say that one's pretty much about two boxes. Yeah, if I go through each and every single one of these, they're definitely about two boxes each. So what does that mean? That means it's a regular rhythm. And again, just take a step back and take a look at these. If you really want to go through every single one of them, you can't. We're not going to do that in this video. It will take forever. So just take a look, step back, and say, is it about two boxes between each one? It pretty much is. So we know that this one is regular. What do we do now? We say, okay, let's go ahead and look for a P wave. So it has to be upright where? It has to be upright in lead two and inverted in AVR. Well, this one's going really fast. And here's what happens sometimes. Whenever the heart rate is going so fast, the T wave and the P wave kind of get mushed to one another. I am pretty sure that if you look at this guy, you can see here's the T wave and there's our P wave. And again, here's our T wave and that's our P wave. And it's upright. Now, am I completely 100% positive? No. The best way that you can determine this is to try to slow the heart rate down. Well, how do you do that? You can try to do some of the older ways where they have, you know, have the person kind of bear down like they're going to, you know, poop themselves like they call the Valzava maneuver. You can have them breathe through a straw. There's different vagal maneuvers to try to slow the heart rate down. Sometimes that just doesn't work. Sometimes you have to give them a medication like adenosine, which basically is going to block the AV node and slow down that heart rate so that you can separate that T wave and P wave from one another. So sometimes that's what you have to do. Am I pretty sure that's a P wave? Absolutely. But how would I be 100% positive? I got to slow the heart rate down. All right, let's go up to AVR though. What do we say? Has to be inverted. I would again say that that's the T wave and I'd say that's the P wave. I'd say that's my T wave, that's my P wave. And it is inverted, right? And I can definitely see that these are inverted. Again, am I 100% positive that that is a P wave? Not completely. I'd have to slow the heart rate down to determine that. And again, that's something that you have to remember with EKGs. They're not always perfect like this. And that's something that we have to realize, okay? 
So I definitely, in this case, I'm pretty darn sure that this is going to be sinus. But if I wanted to definitely be positive, I could slow their heart rate down. But I know that this one is definitely sinus. Okay. Next, what do we do? We got to make sure that there's AV association. Is there a, Q, a P for every QRS? Well, if I'm looking down here and assuming that that is my P wave, I got a QRS complex and then I got a T wave. P, QRS, then I got a T wave. And as I go all the way down throughout this rhythm strip, it looks as though every P wave is followed by a QRS complex. So yes, I'm gonna go ahead and say that there is AV association here. Perfect, QRS complexes, are they wide or they narrow? I'm kind of looking around here. And again, you're gonna get pretty quick at this. I don't have to get down here in the nitty gritty and really stare and say, okay, there's my Q part there. There's gonna be my uh, S wave there. That's only one box, that's normal. Okay, so I know that this is actually going to be a narrow QRS. So. Again, what do I have from this one? I know that it's sinus rhythm, but I know it's fast, but there's no problem here. Now, am I 100% positive that this couldn't be like SVT or atrial flutter? No, it could be. Remember, that's the three differentials. Whenever somebody has uh, uh, tachy, they're tachycardic, and they have a narrow and regular rhythm, Three things I want you guys to think about. Sinus TAC, SVT, and atrial flutter. These are the three ones that sometimes can be difficult to differentiate. This one, I'm almost positive it's sinus TAC. Again, 100%, no. How would I differentiate? Slow the heart rates down, and then it'll help you to be able to recognize, is, is this sinus TAC, is this SVT, is this atrial flutter? Also, another way I could do it is give them fluids. Sometimes sinus tack is usually just because someone has a fever or they're dehydrated. You give them fluids, their heart rate starts to slow down, or you give them antipyretics, the fever starts to subside, the heart rate starts to go down, those T wave and P wave start becoming a little bit more separated. Now again, because I know that this is definitely sinus rhythm, this has to be sinus tachycardia, okay? So again, this is gonna be a sinus tachycardia. What does this usually do to? Usually, again, this is most commonly because someone is actually gonna be having low volume, right? So maybe they're dehydrated, or it could be due to fever, or it could be anything that's really increasing the sympathetic nervous system, maybe exercise or something like that, right? So by slowing the heart rate down, by either giving them antipyretics, giving them fluids because their volume depleted, that's gonna slow that heart rate down and help to be able to treat this condition.